Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, back to Trail Makers. And today I'm going to be working on a propulsion mechanic that is inspired by the cuttlefish. And uh, it was actually this comment that got me to thinking that this might actually be a cool idea. So I had been messing around with sail propulsion concepts lately, and this was one of the things I came up with, with in the last video. And if you look at an individual sail and the motion that it's doing, it is kind of similar to what uh, the motion that a cuttlefish fin, I don't know if you'd call them fins, but uh, what they use to propel themselves through the water, they create this kind of wave that goes down the body. So I figured this concept right here could be adapted on a smaller scale, but over a larger distance. And we could create this really cool wave effect that theoretically should be able to propel us if this thing can propel us. It's definitely gonna require a lot of fine tuning of the programming, but uh, I'm here to try it out. So let's see what we can do here with this. All right, so the way that I'm gonna start off is just with a single unit, a single sail attached to a single piston. And I'm gonna be using steering hinges instead of servos this time to rotate the sails because uh, servos are kind of bulky and heavy. And although they are faster than steering hinges, this is less gonna be about speed and more just about aesthetic functionality rather than min-maxing functionality. All right, so all we should really need is the piston and the steering hinge, and then I just gotta create some logic to uh, make it go up and down in sequence as it also angles the sail so that we can deflect the water in the appropriate direction to push ourselves forwards. And then as we translate that through an entire row of these, it should give us constant propulsion forwards. Yeah, see, this is the maximum speed of the steering hinge. I really feel like the steering hinges should have a higher maximum speed. It really needs to get into that angle as quick as possible, but this only allows us to go up to two. I'm just gonna deal with it right now because it's probably gonna create a smoother look to the wave. Okay, I think I have the basic unit of functionality here. So if I hold W, you can see it angles down, pulls down, angles up, pushes up. And I've had to scale this to the maximum speed of the steering hinge. I would have it go faster, but that is as fast as the steering hinge will go up and down. So if I have the piston go any faster than that, it's not gonna line up with the angles. This is gonna be interesting. How am I gonna program the wave of this? Well, let's see what happens here. Well, let's see what happens here. If I just copy and paste, is this gonna collide? I hope this doesn't collide. Oh, it doesn't copy and paste the programming. Are you serious? There we go. Oh, and that does have a collision. So I am gonna have to give a block separation, which is unfortunate because having them having them be flush like that would have been kind of cool. All right, well, one block shouldn't be too bad. And I know this isn't the right sequence yet, but we're just going one step at a time. All right, so that does look kind of cool on its own. But now let's see if we can step them in like a wave. All right, I think a half second actually works really well because the back of the front one is in line with the front of the back one. So it, I think it's gonna create that more realistic wave feel as it goes down. But the good news is that I should be able to copy and paste this to the opposite side. And I hope that it's gonna retain Okay, now all I gotta do is reverse the steering hinges. So at least I only have to really program one half of it, and then the other half just gets copy and pasted over. All right, I got four of them in a row working now, and it seems to be working exactly as planned. Um, so I'm pretty sure that this is one cycle, meaning that if I just copy and paste this entire section down, I shouldn't have to adjust any of the timings. All right, let's see if this works. I mean, technically it works once it gets into the cycle, but it is kind of weird that it starts m in the middle as well. But is that okay? Like, I feel like that's okay. It would make my life a lot easier if I just accept that. This still looks really cool, doesn't it? All right, hopefully this is actually functional. All right, so this is how the prototype is looking so far. I put a bunch of BCDs on the top and some weights on the bottom so we can kind of not have to worry about our orientation, I hope. So let's give it a quick uh, test flight here, or test swim rather. All right, so we're on the surface. Let's just go ahead and go and see what happens. Oh, oh, there's some forward momentum. There <laughs> there's some forward momentum. Just some, not, not a whole lot. Just, I was really hoping for a little bit more than this. Just a little bit more than this. All right, I did a little experiment to see what would happen if I doubled up the piston length. It makes the timing look a little bit weird. It does make us go slight bit faster. Also, like it completely messed up the dimensions of this thing. But um, I think I might have to 
just accept the fact that steering hinges are not fast enough for this purpose. So I'm gonna have to redesign this whole thing to accommodate servos instead. Ugh. Okay, back to the drawing board. All right, guys, I have rethought everything from scratch. I've rethought the entire logic system, so this may actually be a lot easier to program. Before, I had each segment of logic completely independent, but now I'm actually going... I forgot that I could just feed logic into logic. I had been activating the logic with the controls, but now I have a single activation point here, and then this one leads into all of the other logic. So that should hopefully allow me to create a logic chain that is kind of self-working. All right, so check it out. Now, this is going to be able to go much faster in sequence because of how much quicker these uh, rotating servos spin in, in contrast to the steering hinges. So hopefully I can have this go down in a complete line pretty easily. Oh, yeah, this is looking good. So this works a little bit differently. It's not as simple as copy and pasting because the logic also duplicates. So they'd be activating ones from the previous uh, segment. But instead, I just save it as a separate segment like this. And then all I got to do is attach it and then hook this logic gate into the next one. And it's all already programmed into the sequence. Oh, except I also forgot. By default, these pistons end up having controls inputted into them. So I just got to uh, delete the inputs. So then it works. Look at that. This is great. All right. Now let's add another four more segments and we should be good to go. All right. Check it out. Yeah. Now, hopefully, this is going to get us a little bit more speed, something a little bit more practical. All right, check it out. I've messed around with the timings a lot. So now, as you can see, it goes up and down much faster. And this actually enables us to get some pretty decent speed here. Let's let's do a quick uh, test with just this. That doesn't have any other control surfaces or anything yet. But uh, look at this. That right there is what I'm talking about. We're getting 20, almost 30 kilometers an hour on just this alone. This is way, way better than what we had before. All right, now let's actually... Whoa, did you see those sails fly away? That was weird. All right, but let's actually try to build something out of this and uh, give it some more functionality as well. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I think I got all the controls I needed here. It's mostly servo controlled as far as pitch and roll and all that stuff goes, just because it's easier. There is a little bit of help on the uh, the head there with, you can see the fins go up and down to help with pitch. But other than that, it just has pretty simple servo controls. So all we do is press space to go. And uh, oh yeah, sometimes I forget that it's going in the direction of, you know, the the end of the head here because that's generally the direction that cuttlefish and squid and, and cephalopods like that, that's the direction they tend to go in. But as you can see, we actually have a pretty comfortable speed going here. So I actually want to go into the high seas. This water is really boring in comparison. I just spawned in here because the uh, the weather and the lighting is really nice for building. But as far as testing things out underwater, the high seas is going to be where it's at. So let's jump over to the high seas. We'll put this thing down there and see how it feels. All right, here we are back in the high seas. Um, let's go ahead and try to get ourselves underwater here. Oh, is that uh, is that an actual chest I haven't gotten yet? Let's actually do something productive with this thing. I mean, for something that is just purely sail powered. Oh, oh, I uh, hit the thing a little bit. Okay, apparently I already got this one. It's just glitched out and not open. But yeah, for something that is purely sail powered and doesn't use any other form of propulsion, this is actually not too bad as far as speed goes. Let's go ahead and swim over into these jellyfish because I just, I just want to see this thing get destroyed. I, I don't see these jellyfish in the high seas that often. They're pretty... It seems like they're pretty sparse. <laughs> they just ate right through to my seat and killed me. Yeah, I don't know if you guys realize, but stuff is uh, pretty deadly in here. So... For lack of reverse, we do have the ability to turn in place thanks to the servos. Let's go ahead in this direction. Actually, let's go, uh, let's do underwater over at the Tiki Wharf. The lighting's a little bit better here. This is more like it. We got actual colorful fish and stuff. I feel like I'm right at home here, but I do not have a lot of clearance. It's not very deep here. I feel like a person who is a lot better with uh, the logic and trail makers and stuff could make it so that it was actually... Uh, had forward, reverse, and you could even independently control each side to then give you steering, like tank steering. That That's totally possible with this thing, but um, I do not have the know-how to do that with Trailmaker's logic just yet. So uh, I just kept it simple and used the steering servos for the rest of it. 
Uh, if you guys have any other ideas, let me know down in the comments below. Any cool mechanisms or experiments that you'd like to see happen. If you enjoyed this one, you'll probably enjoy some other stuff that I have on the channel that you can find on the end screen right here. Hope this video has earned your subscription. Anyway, this has been Scrapman, and I'll see you next time. Bye.